player situation you have all come across people who are poorly adherent to the treatment that you provide every one of you has gone through anywhere from 6 to 12 years of medical education and post graduation and all and the fact remains that only about one third of your patients actually adhere to the treatment regime that you give that's a broad it is statistics roughly one third and that means all your knowledge all your education and all your time is wasted in two thirds of patients so very often the reaction of the medical professional or the nursing uh, uh, aide with you would be to scold the patient if you don't take my medicines properly why do you come to me uh, you are wasting your time you are wasting my time at least here after take the medicines properly that's the kind of reaction that happens it never works how do you react to it uh, when the person is uh, seen to be poorly adherent to the treatment regime there are a few things that i would advise one remember that if they are not taking the medicines properly there is a good reason for it it's up to us to find out what that reason is the reason may be well they just misunderstood the instructions it's common you say four hourly they take it four times a day and usually the instruction is given to them about five medicines at the same time anybody gets confused and the scribbled instructions on our prescriptions and on the pharmacies uh, envelope that they give the medicines are also usually not very legible and the person may not be able to read anyway so instead of scolding them if you ask if you acknowledge if you could not take the medicines there must be a good reason for it tell me is it giving you any side effects if you approach in that fashion they may say well doctor actually my neighbor said this medicine is very bad and even then i hope you will be able to control your temper what does it show you that your neighbor has got more of trust from the patient than you or i that's a plain fact it's up to us to build that trust so that they will then ask hey doctor is it my neighbor was saying that this will damage the stomach is it true okay in let us come back to sorna prabha what i next uh, raju can you give me the next slide what i needed to remember and what you need to remember that pain is not only a sensation this is part of the official definition by the international association for study of pain that pain is a sensory and emotional experience well it goes on to say something more like associated with actual or potential tissue damage or described in such term, terms of such damage etc ignore that let us remember the fact that your pain is a sensory and emotional experience the x stimuli doesn't always translate to x pain the pain experience is related to your emotional status at that time and does everybody have the same ability to withstand pain we are not made the same okay we all have two eyes one nose 
two years. Okay, we are similar, but we are all different individuals. Emotionally, socially, our upbringing. So we have a right to be different. And a person, if it's emotionally less capable of tolerating pain, we have to accept that, accept the person as that person is. Any comments? Anybody? the bottom line of that slide we when the person says i am in pain we should start by believing him i know uh, if you are working in the esi or even in the armed forces there will be some people malingering things to get a day's leave it happens i know but that is that is so much less common than the person being honest. So we start by assuming that if somebody says he's in pain, he's in pain. That pain may have a strong emotional component and that is something that we have to understand. Next, please. So it was Dame Cecily Saunders. We mentioned her last time, I think. Dame Cecily Saunders was the founder of modern palliative care movement. In the 1960s, in UK, working in London, she set up the first hospice, St. Christopher's Hospice. And she talks about this concept of total pain. Generally, when you mean pain, you are meaning the physical pain, generally. They use, remember, a stimulus, an impulse passing to the dorsal horn, to the brain, you feeling the pain. But we have to accept that pain experience also depends on your emotional status at some the time. The way you are brought up, suffering, including financial worries, if if the person doesn't know how to bring the money for tomorrow's medicines, his suffering will be more. And spiritually, if the person feels there is no meaning in life, nobody cares, I might as well go. God has also forsaken me. That person's experience will be worse. So when I am treating Sorna Prabha, I have to remember that my objective is not only to treat that physical pain. My objective is to treat her suffering, to make her life easier for her, to improve the quality of life. You hear what I'm saying? I am essentially saying that the objective of pain management is not pain management. The objective of pain management is more than that. It's about improving quality of life. Because if you are taking away some part of the physical pain and adding another element of suffering, which is even worse, that actually worsens quality of life. Next, please, Raju. Objective of pain management is quality of life. Okay. Does anybody want to question that or challenge that or ask a, make a comment about that? So when I asked her, Sorna Prabha, if you are not taking that, I don't have a watch. I can't tell the time. Ah, so that was easy. I said there is a clock in the uh, living room. Let us bring it and hang, hang it in front of you. I don't like looking at the clock. That's the time when you are likely to be angry. Right? 
you are offering to physically bring the clock and put it up there and then she says i don't like looking at the clock i asked sorna prabha why is it that you don't like looking at the clock you see the answer you can read it on the screen this was what was behind it next please uh i brought out that story i am not going to describe sarna prabha's story what uh, uh raju can you go back to the last slide not that i need it okay just leave it there uh i'll very briefly tell you that we explored her history we found that at the age of 17 she had depression she had jumped into a well to commit suicide and was rescued with a fracture of the leg and she believes that god has punished her for attempting suicide she was in clinical depression at that time she was also mortally scared of her husband who was coming home from the armed forces on annual leave next month all this together was her suffering she actually had physical pain she had advanced cancer of the breast it had eroded to the bracket plexus she had both a nociceptive pain and a neuropathic pain down the arm and once we got we un- we got her to accept as her friends she started taking the medicines properly once the antidepressants worked she was a lot better she needed the morphine she needed all the medicines but without finding out the reason we would have completely failed so the reason why i brought in sorna prabha story is that hereafter i am going to talk about the pathophysiology of pain the neural changes of pain but at the background i would like everyone to remember that while that is important we need to remember the whole person i am sure there must be somebody who wants to ask a question or make a comment raju let us wait for half a minute to see if anybody can think up any question and if you have a question please raise your hand No, sir. We are not having any hands coming up. So, Anna. Oh, oh, wait, 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 wait a minute, wait a minute. There is a question from Geeta. In this patient, as time passes, stimulus is in the, is more. That is true, Doctor uh, Geeta. in this patient as the disease advances the pain the physical pain will keep on increasing that happens unless you are able to control the disease that happens that is true uh raju i don't know what has happened no i don't think i am hearing anything we can uh, hear- yes yes now i can hear you lost you again what's uh, happening sir is it clear now yeah it is okay sir, sir uh, so so i uh, dr geeta have i answered your question but uh, let us wait uh, related to dr geeta's question in this patient as time passes stimulus is more let me bring up another hypothetical situation raju next slide please 
next uh, now suppose dr geeta and everyone let us imagine that the disease is constant stimulus is not increasing neither increasing nor decreasing the physical stimulus on the screen by arrow what i am trying to show is a no see scepter or a bare nerve ending in the case of sorna prabha it's on the chest and in the bracket plexus the stimulus is there an electrical impulse passes from the stimulus uh, from the uh, no see scepter passes across the peripheral nerve i am not going to the da delta and c fibers and all that complication now deliberately trying to keep it simple through the peripheral nerve to the dorsal horn of the spinal cord so that is the dorsal horn of the spinal cord from where image crosses to the opposite side and moves upwards to the thalamus and cortex and then you appreciate pain that's the physical pain so here is a question if i put if hypothetically the stimulus is constant what would happen to the pain would it also remain constant or would it decrease or would it increase anybody wants to answer that question dr uh, sreenithi and who else dr tia riyas depends on the causes and the emotion dr geeta says hey okay we have a variety of answers uh, uh, decrease constant depends on the cause and the emotion of the pain decrease okay uh, i will accept that all answers are correct in the sense if a mo- if the mild kind of pain and emotionally the person is accepting it okay i am my neck pain it's no big deal it's a bit of cervical spondylosis i can live with it then the experience becomes less that is the pain experience becomes less but everyone remember that's the less common reaction why do you have pain it's the body's protective mechanism isn't it your pain with an injury tells you to run away to escape it is protective it gives a gives a warning there is danger keep yourself away but there is no running away from the cancer so what the body says does is if you are not running away and the stimulus is continuing the body tries to keep you give keep giving you more and more and more and more pain it does that by a variety of mechanisms that's what we are going to discuss i accept emotionally depending on the person the emotional reaction may decrease the pain experience or increasing it but physical physically the neurologically the pain ordinarily would keep on increasing unless treated or unless the cause is uh, removed it will keep on increasing and i am going to describe the various mechanisms to you <clears throat> raju next slide please how does the body give you more pain one it causes a recruitment and sensitization of nociceptors uh if i am if i am to give you an example from uh wait a minute that's a question from rias won't there be tolerance sir uh what else is it 
won't there be tolerance and hence pain decreasing riyas one word answer is no as i said an emotional adaptation is possible but just imagine uh, riyas you have pricked your own finger for a blood sample as a third year student right all of you have done that there was pain imagine somebody pricking that finger every 10 seconds same needle same depth you keep on pricking what will happen after one hour 10 hours device audio absolutely you are using the device audio Was there a riot going on somewhere in the background? Okay, Riaz, you know what I mean. If the stimulus is continuing, the body's coping mechanism is to give you more pain, not to give less pain. That kind of tolerance, except an emotional adaptation, is not possible. Physically, the pain will keep on increasing. And one of the mechanisms is by silent or sleepy nociceptors being recruited actually i mean there are people from the armed forces they know uh, the reserve police force we have one unit in trivandrum ordinarily they are not out on the streets keeping peace they are in the camp doing their in parades the or whatever they do <laughs> but if there is a riot they are called into action so these silent or sleepy nociceptors shown here in red are such things ordinarily inactive but called into action so what happens rias imagine they were just imagine for argument sake there were four nociceptors there from them the electrical impulse was created and passing through to the dorsal horn if four more silent or sleepy nociceptors are recruited now you have eight nociceptors eight for say for the electrical current to be generated and transmitted so this is one of the ways in which pain will keep on increasing but that's not all that you next please with the, there is also an element of recruitment happening at the central level there is adjacent spinal segments get recruited and at the risk of boring those who have heard this already the example i immediately think of is somebody with a rib fracture you have a patient with a fracture of the uh, uh, third rib coming to your casualty you ask him where is the pain he will say it's here tomorrow on rounds you ask him where is the pain he'll say the whole chest is in pain unless the pain has been treated that is adjacent spinal segments are also recruited called on purely with the intention of giving you more pain pain is a warning you have more warning now next please another we another way in which this happens is by sensitization of the nociceptor i mean it is there it is just active more and more now this seems to be predominantly the action of prostaglandins prostaglandins you have struck your finger with a pin the injury causes liberation of chemicals on other mis prostaglandins they sensitize the nerve endings to the action of all pain producing substances you know you know so many substance b histamine serotonin hydronions potassium ions kinins and so on so once prostaglandins have sensitized them all the other pain producing substances are likely to give you more and more pain <clears throat> wait a minute based on this 
can you think of a way of relieving the pain how can you treat that sensitization of the nose receptors please raise your hand and uh, raju will unmute you okay what drugs very good geeta absolutely we can use medicines which will decrease the sensitivity prostaglandin inhibitors when you use your ibuprofen or diclofenac or acyclofenac or mefenamic acid or aspirin in the nsaid except paracetamol the predominant action is only to stop the prostaglandins from functioning so that the sensitization decreases and all these pain producing substances are less effective very good next please similarly there is also a process of central sensitization that is the dorsal horn cell being more sensitive look in another 2 minutes i'll stop all this pathophysiology sorry about this but of physiology is not fun but this is important to know the stimuli going from the nociceptor ordinarily would be transmitted to the brain we said that right from the nociceptor stimulated electrical impulse is generated and from the dorsal horn it goes up now if the dorsal horn cell gets more and more sensitized that means if one impulse goes from the periphery 10 impulses may go from the dorsal horn that may happen in the neurons also so much so the pain experience will dramatically keep increasing this takes more time but this is real and the main neurotransmitter involved in central sensitization is also called the wind up phenomenon winding up like a spring this is mediated by n methyl d aspartate nmda hey does that give you any idea about the one way of treating a pain that has been lasting a, a lot can you think of a way of blocking the sensitization is there an anesthetist in the group no plexus blocks that is okay if the peripheral nerve is blocked pain is blocked that will be a way of preventing in uh, sensitization ganglion blocks will be a way of preventing pain preventing sensitization but can you think of an nmda antagonist that is the anesthetic agent ketamine so in prolonged pain yes yes dr jitin uh, and uh, rias yes ketamine the anesthetic agent used in sub anesthetic doses can relieve the central sensitization and prolong difficult complicated pain that is not for everyone to use it is for the most important reason is one you have to learn that dr chirag also says kitavan one you have to know that if the pain is not easily treated not responding well there may be other things like ketamine that can help and maybe if you are not confident about using ketamine if you don't have the experience you may have to send the person to somewhere where we can you can get expert help or easier just ring us up or connect with raju get uh, sunil or one of my colleagues or myself on the line and ask so what i'm saying is nmda antagonism can help in tre tre uh, treating long standing pain 
of difficult nature but it is not for routine use it's only for selected patients raju next slide please p mentions recruitment of nociceptors recruitment of adjacent spinal segments sensitization and nociceptors sensitization of the dorsal horn cell we mentioned in addition to the psychological uh, mechanisms fear and anxiety worsening pain these are all reasons why untreated pain keeps on increasing in area and in intensity therefore the message treat pain early don't wait till it has caused all that problems i have not described all problems that can happen in the nervous system due to untreated pain let us treat pain early as a medical student i was taught to avoid analgesics as much as possible today we teach if pain is severe enough to cause suffering treat it early avoid all those changes in the nervous system and if the pain is continuous if you give the pain medicines on a continuous basis depending on duration of action then the total dose requirement will be less if you give morphine eight hourly the action will be usually for about four hours then the pain comes back the sensitization happens the recruitment happens then the same dose will not give enough pain relief whereas if a smaller dose is used four hourly the prevention of neurological changes will help in better management of pain treat pain early all continuous pains treat pain on a continuous basis by the clock depending on duration of action of the medicine next please so there is a chat question yes anything about pain memory hmm. <clears throat> yes uh <clears throat> there are two elements to it one is your it's deliberate god almighty put it there that is what protects you the memory protects you the second element is the element of suffering one very bad experience leaves a scar on your memory it is associated with intense emotional reactions now there is more to it this is not all about the pain memory its implications on central pain on phantom limb pain etc are also important but right at the moment i am not going to it because we we are covering the basics and anyway we have limited time based on the pathophysiology that i have described pain can be of two types the simple pain that i described by stimulating the nociceptor and the pain traveling up through the peripheral nerve to the dorsal horn of the spinal cord then going to the brain that's the ordinary kind of pain nociceptive pain when you put a knife on the person it's nociceptive pain when uh, so in sorna prabha's cancer in her breast was affecting the nociceptors causing pain it was a nociceptive pain but how about sorna prabha's pain in the arm her disease had eaten into the brachial plexus and she had pain all over the upper limb she had burning pain there was no pathology in the upper limb pathology was only in the brachial plexus now that pain in the upper limb is caused by abnormal impulse generation in the brachial plexus ne- raju next please uh, so uh, the second type of pain is the neuropathic pain a pain which occurs by abnormal impulse generation in the nervous system is called neuropathic pain i gave you one example sornaprabha's malignant infiltration of the brachial plexus 
Can you come out with a few more examples for neuropathic pain? Anybody, uh, any examples of neuropathic pain? Please unmute Dr. Riyas. Dr. Riyas, third row, second. Yes, yes Dr. Dr. Riyas. Pain due to cervical spondylosis. Yes. Pain due to cervical spondylosis is usually caused by compression of the nerve root, causing pain in the area of distribution. And uh, Dr. Ananda Krishnan says sciatica, absolutely. A yeah, disc prolapse compressing the nerve roots causes the sciatica pain. And herpes zoster, Dr. Gita says, absolutely. No, wait. The In herpes zoster and diabetic neuropathy, what happens is that the viral infiltration or the my, or in herpes or the microvascular ischemia in diabetes is making the nerves abnormal, causing abnormal impulse generation and causing pain. Very good. All these are excellent examples of peripheral neuropathic pain. Now, if I bring in an, another term, what about a central neuropathic pain? These were all examples of periphery. Say, even in uh, her sciatica, it's a dose, it's a nerve root that is, that is getting impinged. That is still peripheral nerve system. Can you think of a central neuropathic pain? Have you ever seen? Yes. Have you ever seen? Dr. Uh, yes, I was giving the example of uh, central neuropathy. Sorry, can, can you repeat that? I didn't hear you. Hello. Yes. Uh, sir, uh, patient with uh, carcinoma buccal mucosa com often always complains of uh, pain over ear. Is it neuropathic pain? It is neuro. It, it's very often neuropathic pain, yeah, but that's also a peripheral neuropathic pain. But as Dr. Gita says, a thalamic syndrome pain, that is, somebody has a, had a stroke, one half is paralyzed. If you touch him, he can't feel the pain. But he always complains of pain there. Pain can be in the area of absent sensations. That's because from his thalamus, abnormal impulses are being generated. That's a cruel kind of pain where you have anesthesia, but still pain. Similarly, spine tumors can also cause it. Now, uh, Dr. Anandarshan, yes, uh, trigeminal neuralgia, uh, it's, a, it's a peculiar kind of pain. About 90% of cases of trigeminal neuralgia is com caused by compression of the uh, nerve fibers within the brain by neuro, I mean, by vascular proliferation. So yes, trigeminal neuralgia, now we know, is mostly central. That, those are very good examples. I mention this because I'm trying to keep it on very practical. The difference between nociceptive and neuropathic does make a difference in management. And even within neuropathic, between peripheral and central neuropathic pain, it still makes a difference in the management. I'm not going to the management now, just mentioning that understanding this path pathophysiology, being able to make a distinction between nociceptive and neuropathy is still important. Next, please, Raju. And you can't really diagnose neuropathic pain by imaging or any test. The Clinical diagnosis by mainly three features, which are not very absolute. It can be confusing. Typically, the neuropathic pain is burning, shooting, lancinating, etc. But an aching case possible. Aching can be both neuropathic and nociceptive. A neuropathic pain is in the area of distribution of a nerve or a group of nerves a nerve or a group of nerves. Imagine herpes, 
sciatica but not in the case of diabetic neuropathy because it is diffuse so typically neuropathic pain is in the area of distribution of a nerve and a third feature in long standing neuropathic pain is abnormal sensation in the area of pain i don't think we have the time to go into the why that happens but if you try to remember these three features the nature of pain burning shooting etc distribution in the area of distribution of a nerve or a group of nerves and abnormal sensation in the area of pain these together will help us to give an idea clinically about whether a pain is nociceptive or neuropathy. Uh, Raju, I apologize to the group. Raju, uh, later on, before we show this presentation, if you use the same presentation, please note that I have made a mistake in the second part. In area of distribution of a nerve or a group of nerves. That's what it should be. Okay, next please. If uh, erasing from this, I bring it down to practical points. Remember we said we'll start by believing the person. And the person has to trust you. Start by conveying empathy. With your face and body language, convey that I care for you. And say what you see. If you say, you seem to be in a lot of pain. The person immediately feels, oh God. Somebody, is, somebody understands that I have been paid. That helps to build that relationship. Next, please. Raju, is there one more slide? So I will stop there. Uh, I am not going into the management at this stage. That's for another session. But um, I see that we still have some seven minutes for any questions or answers. Raju, please stand by with the same presentation. With the questions, we may go back, want to go back to previous slides. Yes, sir. So anyone wishes to have any doubts or give any comments, please do raise your hands. Anybody? Doctor, yes. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Riaz. Uh, it was an eye opener that Pali that the pain increases with time. Uh, Riaz or anybody, have you ever seen a patient who you ask, where is your pain? And the person says, my whole body is in pain. Every year we see at least five or six patients with prolonged untreated pain, whose pain is all over the body and it's excruciating. Anybody else? From GCRI? Please unmute yourself. Yes. Yes, sir. Today only we had a patient with multiple myeloma, myeloma and uh, she had the pain all over the body and at a time very unbearable and after some time it really is, it, it all, uh, it's on and she was taking morphine but uh, she says, uh, without morphine also she is feeling the same pain and with morphine also she is feeling the pain. Uh, so, thank you, doctor. Sorry, doctor, your name is? Dr. Bhavna Patel. Uh, Dr. Bhavna. Uh, sorry that I forgot your name. Um, yes, uh, multiple myeloma can be difficult, particularly because the pain is multifactorial and often from bones. You know, bone pain is particularly hard to treat. You can imagine, if I have a tumor here, the tissues can swell. Within a bone, 
this rigid structure tissues cannot swell therefore the pressure on the nerve ending can be intense so often it has to be a multi modal treatment morphine in bone pains morphines may be only partially effective if it is bony pain very often palliative radiation becomes necessary and depending on the renal function often in uh, uh, multiple myeloma there can be renal dysfunction but if not ensuring adequate hydration using an nsaid say ibuprofen 400 mg three times a day can remarkably improve the quality of pain relief with morphine dr jidin uh sir uh, you are not audible you to some of uh, continuous pain other than what uh, i have described this is like myeloma sorry sorry dr jidin uh, in continuous pain other than what was described uh yes sir what one condition that psychiatry we deal with this is persistence we heard up to persistent of pain disorder sorry sorry persistent <coughs> come again ah uh, somatoform pain disorder oh yes oh yes as we said the emotional yes. consequences can either reduce the pain in a mild pain or very often sir uh, very much uh, worsen and then somatization is something that we like to accept yes sir. that is a person's emotional experience manifesting as a physical problem that partially can be explained physically but not mostly can be explained only by this uh, somatization why it is physically because if somebody has pain even if it is intense headache caused by the stress and strain and impending examination and this and that and uh, uh, family issues eventually there can be muscular pain happening because of reflex muscle spasm and then a little bit of pain is perceived emotional experience is severe thank you dr jaden i did not i failed to mention somatization somatization is real that is emotional suffering manifesting as physical pain one last question and we'll go on to the case presentation i think right sunil uh, dr uh, riyas we treat children with diabetes they do fingerprints and blood sugar testing multiple times every day so is it as time passes by their pain sensation will increase no maybe not a, for a sensitization to happen the pain has to be continuous it's not only a question of severity but with the example i gave was somebody i mean typically they do it in a rat style they uh, clamp a mouse's tail and give it the same stimulus every minute only in that continuous the pain has to be continuous for sensitization to happen <coughs> but remember if their emotional status gets worse if anxiety or depression then the pain experience can be more even with a pin prick oh thank you thank you for the questions and uh, for the interaction so uh, i think uh, the, in the uh, i would like to uh, okay dr ovais ahama please unmute yourself and speak one minute let's unmute yourself can you unmute yourself dr avais avais ahama can you unmute yourself we can't hear you 
Yeah, now, please speak now. Sorry, you are not audible. Not audible, doctor. Can you please send it by chat? Can't hear you. Sorry. Sorry. Okay, uh, please uh, send your question right So, uh, uh, we talked about uh, the definition of pain. So, pain is not only an unpleasant sensation, but also an emotional experience. Then, pain, uh, if you don't treat pain properly and in continued pain, there are many pathophysiological changes occurs and uh, these are um, recruitment uh, so you have recruitment in the peripheral level which are uh, recruiting the silent or sleepy nociceptors which are known as uh, peripheral recruitment and then there is central recruitment where the adjacent spinal segments are recruited to <laughs> carry the pain then sensitization occurs at the peripheral as well as central level peripheral sensitization occurs mainly due to softer lines and in the central sensitization, mainly the NMD receptor is involved. In addition to this, uh, there are um, even genetic changes <coughs> may take place uh, in the level of neurotransmitters, which can also change the pain um, perception. Then pain is mainly divided into two types nociceptive pain and neuropathic pain so that nociceptive pain is due to the stimulation of nociceptors or the free nerve endings which is known as nociceptive pain whereas if you stimulate the peri uh, peripheral nerve or spinal cord or central nervous system which is known as neuropathic pain and the features of neuropathic pain are one is quality of pain Usually the quality will be like burning, stabbing or pricking or lightning like then the area of uh, pain, it will be in neurodermatomal distribution and uh, uh, the third feature is there will be abnormal sensation which may be either decreased sensation or it can be increased sensation. The increased sensation may be allodynia or hyperalgesia. So let's uh, move on to on the patient's story. Dr. Richa Singh uh, from GCRI will be presenting the patient's story. Dr. Richa? Dr. Richa, we are not, we can't hear you. Yes, doctor. No, it's not. No, doctor. Uh, can you remove that headset and speak? Hello? Yes. Yeah. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Dr. Richa Singh, medical officer working in GCRI, Ahmedabad. Today I'm going to present a case which I have uh, seen in my OPD only. 49 year old male diagnosed with buccal mucosa locally advanced. Uh, the patient has already taken chemotherapy and on palliative uh, radiotherapy. Next slide please. The presenting complaints were uh, he was having oral ulcer since 9 months and inability to open the mouth adequately since last 6 months. Uh, pain over left buccal mucosa radiating to ear and uh, head of uh, the same side since last 3 months. Uh, he developed uh, a mass, started developing a mass uh, over left cheek from last two months. And uh, he's also having complaint of insomnia, anxiety, and constip constipation from last few days. Uh, due to inability to open mouth adequately, he's having difficulty in chewing and eating also. Next slide, please. History of illness. The patient, the patient uh, developed a non-healing ulcer over left buccal mucosa, which was further associated with discharge. Uh, he 
He later developed trismus, which were in uh, which was interfering in chewing. So the oral intake was decreased, and which was also causing inability to maintain the uh, oral hygiene. Later, he developed the mass over left cheek and in, uh, in angle of mouth. Uh, skin is not, skin was not involved yet. Uh, he is a tobacco chewer since last fifteen years. He was anxious. He was uh, quite anxious about pain and the ulcer, which was not healing. Then he referred to cancer hospital GCRI by a local uh, dentist. The whole workup was done here. The uh, surgery was planned, but due to hypothyroidism found in anesthesia workup, it was cancelled. So the patient was not happy with, uh, and the patient was not uh, having any prior history of that. So the, uh, by endocrinologist, the thyroxine tablet, uh, 100 microgram was started. Next slide, please. On examination. I found found a irregular mass of three by two centimeter over left cheek, uh, which was ten uh, tense and uh, pinkish purplish in color, and uh, local temperature was raised. There is oral ulcerations also, mucositis, and uh, trismus grade two of trismus, and poor oral hygiene. Uh, neck nodes palpable. His BP was quite low, 90 by 60 mmHg in OPD, which I have uh, mentioned, and a pulse of 88 uh, per minute. Uh, VAS was nine, and ECOG uh, two. Next slide, please. Treatment and uh, investigation. Histopathology shows uh, squamous cell carcinoma, moderately differentiated. And the CT was done to confirm the diagnosis. And uh, this creatinine level was quite quite high, 1.4. And uh, in OPD, I have given him uh, <clears throat> injection DNS with MVI and a tablet of morphine, uh, half tablet of morphine. And I have done sphenopalatine ganglion block, which almost recovered his pain. Next slide, please. Uh, psychological aspect. Uh, first, I'm going to talk about the thing that so surgery was cancelled, so he was patient was not uh, happy with that. As the disease was still progressing, his wife was also concerned about the prognosis of the disease. As uh, he is the only uh, earner in the family, his wife is a housewife, and uh, uh, the son only the only son is studying in an engineering college. The patient. is having anxiety about the disease and which is not letting him sleep quietly he was pleading to recover him he was crying in opd to relieve his pain the patient is from uh, mp so the so he has to bear all the expenses of the treatment we have though we have given uh, the idea about some government schemes running in the hospital uh, family is not uh, having full idea of the status and prognosis of the disease next slide please the medication which i have prescribed him <coughs> Uh, as patient was earlier on uh, tramadol and pcm uh, and the pain uh, the pain relief was not there so i have started him on morphine uh, 10 mg 4 hourly and 10 mg for sos uh, breakthrough pain uh, pcm 500 tds pantop bisacodyl and <coughs> metoclopramide metoclopramide started amitriptyline pregabalin and i have all, uh, advised him to maintain the oral hygiene Uh, rice tube. I have advised him for rice tube, but he was not willing for that. And uh, for mucositis, I have uh, given him magic mouthwash, which uh, includes uh, syrup jalousil, syrup benadryl, and xylocaine whiskers. And uh, I have counselled his wife first about the prognosis, and I have uh, started talking about him as he is still admitted in the hospital. I am trying to to uh, give him the full idea of the disease. Uh, my um, the main concern of the patient. was pain the oral intake and the weakness caused by uh, lack of food uh, his the his main concern was why he is having the disease and why there is no surgery was done and the family's main concern was if it will be fine will the radiation therapy work which was uh, still going and will surgery happen after this his lack of prognosis counseling expenses and the family's nuclear family so there is no support the, the wife is only Uh, summary: A 49-year-old male uh, with inoperable CA buccal mucosa received two cycles of chemotherapy on radiation with complaint of pain, oral ulcers, insomnia, and with minimal support and quite a lot of psychological issues. Next slide, please. Uh, the points which I'm uh, the points to be discussed. Uh, the pain was nine, but my, I have already started him on morphine. But I just want to. and uh, discuss about that can i increase the dose of mor morphine on the altered serum creatinine level and alternatives for that 
and a neuropathic pain which was really quite relieved by sp block but alternative for that also and can it be be con be given again after in a serum altered serum creatinine level how to deal with the patient with uh, spiritual and psychological issues as the patient is not ready to talk or listen or eat anything uh, how to counsel counsel about him about prognosis as he came here to be cured and he thinks that doctor are responsible for the uh, cancellation of surgery thank you thank you dr richa uh, so let's uh, take the first uh, point uh, patient with the pain score of uh, the analog scale uh, the pain score is 9 and morphine was started and uh, pain has come down to 3 but further dosages cannot be increased because of altered serum creatinine can this be continued and what are the alternatives <clears throat> before we ask rajobal sir any uh, participants can comment on this <coughs> anybody want to comment on this can we use uh, uh, can we increase the dose of serum uh, sorry morphine in this patient is morphine a safe drug in renal failure any of you uh, are working in palliative care other than gcrit nobody but uh, any of you have experience in using morphine okay uh, sir I, i don't think uh, anybody is taking up that question so can you talk on the first okay uh, dr avais ahmed has uh, yeah dr avais please unmute yourself and talk yes dr we can try Doctor Avais, sorry, he, he is not uh, audible. Please, sir. Yeah. sir, please mute. mute. Doctor Avais, sir, I'm the. Uh, I'm sorry that we are unable to hear you the second time. Also, please send your question or comment by chat, and maybe Raju, maybe later on you can work with Doctor Avais. to see what the technology problem is uh, so that at least next time we will be able to listen to him uh, many questions there uh, and some questions also have come by chat the main thing is about morphine and renal failure let me ask a question back to the group does morphine cause nephrotoxicity can morphine damage the kidney in presence of older pre existing renal failure don't know okay uh, morphine does not cause ne nephrotoxicity morphine does not damage the kidney no questions asked no doubts morphine does not damage the kidney but he, the morphine and its metabolite are excreted through the kidney so the abnormality is in presence of renal failure the morphine will be morphine and the active metabolite will be in the body longer so what the renal failure does is that morphine will last longer maybe this is a patient who does not need it for hourly you can still titrate it but maybe he will 1.1.4 creatinine maybe he will need it only 6 hourly the dose possibly can be increased but 
one of the aspects to be taken care of is is morphine i mean like is it how much of this is nociceptive pain and how much is the emotional experience due to the anxiety now uh, doctor can i ask you if you have not asked one question that you have to ask him is after each dose of morphine does he get pain relief for some time and then does the relief uh, become less suppose he tells you that after every tablet i am in about half an hour or 45 minutes my pain comes down but on another two hours it comes back suppose that is this is a question you should routinely ask if patients say that with morphine pain relief is inadequate if that happens what does it show that when the blood level rises it is adequate and a little drop and it is inadequate that is the kind of person who will do well with a higher dose of morphine the only problem is ordinarily you can increase the dose of morphine every other day in 36 to 48 hours it will plateau you can increase the dose but in this person that may not be feasible because the renal failure it may take several days to plateau so you can do a, a few things you can try making it less frequent but still allow the patient to take rescue doses suppose after 4 or 3 hours his pain turns to seems to be coming back take a tablet more tomorrow you see how many extra doses has he taken in the meantime you are also monitoring for drowsiness every day delirium and similar signs of neurotoxicity so in summary morphine is safe for the kidney but morphine will last longer the accumulation can be more therefore increasing the dose has to be done much more carefully than in the person with a normal renal function that's one solution a second solution is to use another opioid which doesn't uh, accumulate in renal failure sunil you want to uh, your experience with methadone is so much more than mine fentanyl is uh, safe but then not good enough for this patient now maybe sunil will want to talk to you about methadone but uh, that's not for routine at this level of your uh, practice in patient with renal failure but one more important thing this patient has significant psychosocial issues that's going to interfere with his pain management what are we going to do about it one can we uh, does he trust you does he believe that you really care for him one of the important things is to convey to him with your eyes and your your body language that you truly care for him don't stand and talk to him pull up a chair and sit down beside him hear his story tell them we really want to make you feel better what that itself he, now he doesn't trust doctors that itself building a relationship with him will be better two uh, there was a question from dr geeta is hypothyroidism a contraindication hypothyroidism is a situation where you have to correct it and then proceed with surgery because the risk of surgery in a hypothyroid state is huge but now how long has richa how long has he been in hospital now <clears throat> a few weeks richa did you hear my question no days sir sorry two days how many days say a week two days two only days, two days okay okay i mean i don't know what stage the 
lesions in maybe it will take about if you have started 100 micrograms of uh, 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 thyroxin daily it will take about 3 weeks to optimize maybe after 2 weeks uh, the tsh will be at a better level at that time you can tell him now that we will try to be, try your best to get you surgery the medicine will take a few weeks to act when your thyroid function is normal we will try again to get you surgical uh, treatment that's a good solution i i might uh, even i mean like where about in madhya pradesh is he from is there a good oncology department in a government hospital nearby say for example if he told me if you tell me that he is from indoor i will i will my response is i will talk to so and so maybe he can get it done in indoor but i don't know i would like to send him to a place where there is oncology and palliative care uh, because otherwise he can be in real difficulty so uh, caring for the whole person adjusting the morphine both in term be carefully considering the renal failure considering switching over to methadone and and uh, seeing after a couple of weeks whether surgery is still possible these are the various solutions i can think of okay now neuropathic pain is relieved uh, by 90 percent by spinopalpin ganglion block can this be given with the altered serum creatinine levels uh, the altered serum creatinine level is no problem but you are going to do it with local anesthetic right <laughs> how many times will you do it that is certainly not a long term solution it's an excellent solution for immediate relief go ahead and do it the kidneys won't be affected that's okay but that's not a lasting solution it's a solution for you to interact with him look let me do that on small let us see if his pain gets better and then that's a time when you kill his mind will be a little cleared of the pain and he'll be able to think intelligently so what are the alternatives for neuropathic pain treatment uh in a malignancy of course naturally your first attempt is to remove the cause can we treat the disease radiation uh, surgery everything that is certainly a major thing uh, you have mentioned tapendalol somebody has asked about tapendalol tapendalol and tramadol both have some action on neuropathic pain they are both weak opioids in a patient who is not getting neurotoxicity from morphine stepping down to a step 2 drug Tapendalol belongs to step two of the analgesic ladder. It's unlikely to work. So, what are other alternatives uh, for neuropathic pain? Uh, in this case, particularly Sunil, I would like you to tell them about methadone, particularly considering that its effect on the neuropathic pain and its effect on. Uh, and its safety in renal failure of course understanding that it is more difficult to titrate but maybe um, richer does your institution have methadone you're not sure so just i mean maybe we do not have time sunil to go into it at this time method there are two things i would like one i would like to continue to discuss this uh, person treatment personally with uh, reach over uh, email or whatever so that we can see if we can help him more secondly uh, methadone we can do, deal with in on another day as you as the discussion proceeds uh, but uh, sunil we have only a few minutes left yeah. you have not given your input Um, no sir uh, and uh, so this patient was on amitriptyline and uh, gabapentin 
So amitriptyline was uh, she was taking uh, he was taking 25 milligram and pregabalin 75 milligram. So uh, the doses of pregabalin need to be changed in renal failure, but uh, it is not up to the level uh, up to which we can raise. But even before thinking of uh, pregabalin or gabapentin, uh, we have. Uh, other anticonvulsants, the older anticonvulsants, which are as equal as uh, newer anticonvulsants in terms of pain relief. So we can uh, think of uh, sodium valproate instead of uh, <coughs> uh, pregabalin, and the doses uh, can be um, vary from 200 milligram to uh, can increase up to. Uh, 800 milligram to 1 gram <coughs> and uh, uh, either start with uh, amitriptyline or uh, with uh, older anticonvulsants uh, and increase the dose up to a maximum and then add the anticonvulsants that's what usually being done uh, so in this patient in addition to the <coughs> adjunct analgesics like uh, tricyclic antidepressants and anticonvulsants can think of um, <coughs> methadone Methadone is a good medication, especially for treating neuropathic pain, because it has many mechanisms of action. So it acts like any other opioids, it acts on opioid receptors. That's one mechanism of action. Second, it acts like tricyclic antidepressants. So it inhibits the reuptake of noradrenaline and serotonin, and it can help in neuropathic pain. And it also has got NMDA and agonistic activity. So all these properties makes it a good medication in neuropathic pain and um, in renal failure also it is a safe medication. In this patient, patient is already on 10 milligram of, of morphine uh, for hourly. So we can start with the 2.5 milligram uh, methadone uh, twice a day <clears throat> if it is available for you. Um, Sunil, uh, if I may add a couple of things. One. I think I would like to go upon the tricyclic. Uh, rather than polypharmacy, I would rather build the dose of one to optimal. If he does not tolerate a higher dose of amitriptyline, then I would start the anticonvulsant. Remember that. Second, I mean, like what I would do is, if he's not too tired and too drowsy, uh, you increase the amitriptyline to 50 milligrams at night and even up to 75 milligrams. But uh, if not, as Sunil says, I agree with Sunil totally. Remember, the WHO guidelines for cancer pain management published this year. If you Google in Palium India website for WHO guidelines, you will find it. That does not recommend pregabalin or gabapentin. That still recommends uh, tricyclics and older generation anticonvulsants. It is not a miracle drug, and uh, and anyway, this dose is minute to be significant. So uh, I would rather go upon uh, amitriptyline increase on amitriptyline or follow Sunil's advice and try carbamazepine or sodium valproate. <clears throat> There's a question from Dr. Gita. Pregabalin is given for pain, not as. What is AED, Dr. Gita? AED. Anti epileptic, not as an anti epileptic. Correct, correct. In this case, um, anti convulsants form one of the two mainstays of treatment of neuropathic pain. It is not, I'm sure it is not given as an anti epileptic drug. So let's uh, move on to the third question. How to deal with uh, spiritual and psychosocial issues as patient is not ready to talk or listen or eat? Richa, uh, you or anybody in the team has to spend time with him so that he feels you are a friend and that you really care. But me to him, I mean, he will be angry. In his position, I will also be angry. The anger will be at cancer, but you are there, it may be shown at you. 
I think it's a good idea to give him a sphenopalatine block so that his pain will be less. And somebody whose pain is less is more willing to talk. And I, th I, I, I also feel that is it possible to send him back to Madhya Pradesh provided you can identify a center. Unfortunately, there's very little palliative care in Madhya Pradesh. And if you just live in pain, that is simply not acceptable. Uh, I, the, the steps for uh, spiritual and psychosocial issues is for one thing, make him feel you are a friend. Try to relieve his pain when you are talking to him and uh, address one issue at a time. I see you are angry. What is it that is bothering you most? Will I get cured? We'll try to make you cure, to cure you. That is the objective. But your thyroid has to get better. Otherwise, it's too dangerous for you. So let us wait for two weeks and then maybe it is possible. I hope this disease doesn't progress too much by this time. Uh, spirituality becomes still important, uh, Dr. Gita. It is, we are not talking about the religious uh, issues, etc. Let us talk about whether he, fe he feels motivated. Somebody who feels life has nothing to offer. My life is useless. Nobody can cure me. I am gone. I am suffering needlessly. If he loses hope, that's also a spiritual issue. So we have to build realistic hope. Never promise anything you cannot do. The socioeconomic issue I know is huge. Richard, one of the things that you can do is to go through all the medications. Never prescribe anything too expensive. It will not be practical. And try to get support from wherever that is possible. But, um, and that has to be a major uh, form of treatment. His family may not be eating properly because all the money is going on medicines. So I don't know what kind of psychosocial support is possible. Uh, maybe when the pain is less, you can do a screening for depression to see if he actually needs an antidepressant. And this dose of uh, tricyclic will not have antidepressant action. You may have to add another one. <laughs> uh, Richa, even uh, this is for the class, but uh, if you, after having talked to Dr. Preetha and others, if you would like a continued discussion about this patient, we'll be very happy to continue to do it. Thank you, sir. How to counsel him about prognosis as he came here to be cured and he thinks that doctors are responsible for this? <laughs> Maybe he is still curable, Richard. Maybe after the thyroid function is restored. No, uh, sir. No? No, sir. What, sir, what? Sir, sir. Surgeons have declared that the, this is inoperable disease. Okay, okay. So we will have to explain to him. I mean, like, once until he, you earn his trust, till he feels that you are a real friend, you are genuinely wanting to help them, he will, no, no counseling is effective. The counseling is here to make him feel that you are a friend and then finding out things from his point of view and saying that you, even if cure is not possible, we are going to try our best to make you feel free of pain and send you back home and continue to offer support even when the person is away. You have to find out which part of Madhya Pradesh he comes from. We have to find out where, where is the nearest place where support is available. That's part of the management. No counseling is useful unless we do this sort form of uh, support. <clears throat> Uh, anybody has uh, any more question? Animal says anything that helps him to accept the present 
it must be traumatic to encounter uh, a u turn in your life path absolutely absolutely it is not easy at all so once we are sure that okay this is the situation incurability i didn't know this thank you for clarifying that or i had not at was not attentive enough uh, when you can reach a what uh, you should do is to sit down with him and maybe acknowledge his anger you are feeling very disappointed you are feeling angry tell me what is it that goes through your mind most of the time and he may say you doctors have destroyed me and then you will have to avoid being angry yourself or defend being very defensive you just recount by saying that you think the more of the problem is created by doctors rather than by the disease why do you think so or do you i mean then he may say okay this this and this you may be able to overcome some of the barriers and then uh, at some point of time <clears throat> you are counseling in that case or thing will be finding something that is achievable tell me one thing that we can do for you at this stage if we are unable to cure you and he may say my wife is not eaten for the last 3 days maybe you can do something about it and uh, <clears throat> maybe he will say uh, i don't even have money to go back to my village or he will say when i go back even this medicine will not be available to me that is something that we must do uh, reach in our unit <clears throat> it has happened several times that the patient goes back too far away once it was to maldives once it was to an island uh, sorry uh, it was to lakshadweep at it, not maldives lakshadweep when they did not have palliative care we used to follow up on phone and send him morphine by registered post it is legally permissible so promising him some some continued support within realistic even then he is not going to immediately come to an acceptance it will take you several sessions 2 3 4 days of sitting with him and then he may you may find out something that you can actually give him something that can give him realistic hope he may say just want to go back and see my daughter on small and those things are important okay uh, thank you sir i, I think uh, we will um, uh, finish the session for today and uh, the recommendations for uh, for this patient uh, was um we can uh, increase the dose of morphine if the patient is uh, responding to the present dose of morphine and if there are no toxicities of uh, morphine um then other opioids which can be used in this situation are fentanyl and uh, methadone uh, but uh, we have to also look into the cost factor and there are many psychosocial factors and uh, spiritual uh, factors which need to be addressed and so we need a lot of communication which also need uh, for um, um, making the patient um, understanding about the disease process and uh, um, we need to empathize with the patient because he is such a he has an inoperable malignancy um then um for neuropathic pain we can uh, use um, tricyclic antidepressants or uh, anti convulsants and the dose of, of one of them need to be optimized before <coughs> we step on to the other um, other group of uh, medications and methadone is another uh, agent which can be used uh, to treat uh, neuropathic pain especially in patients with hedonic malignancy who has uh, uh, good chance of having neuropathic pain and uh, it is safe in renal failure also so thank you sir uh, for being with us for today's session and thank you all for um, being present for this session and we will see you on next Thursday. Uh, next Thursday, we will be having continuation of the pain, pain on pain management.
uh, taken by uh, Dr. Mary Abraham. So thank you, sir, and thank you, Dr. Ray. Hey, uh, just let me sh show off this. I have just got this. Mary's new book. Mary has just published a new book. Uh, it's called Conquering Pain. I got it, uh, bought it online. So your next day's faculty member is an author of a textbook on pain. So we can meet Dr. Mary next time. So I have given the feedback form. If any, for any queries, do write to us or call us. So thank you all for joining. See you on next Thursday.